What's up everyone, uh, welcome back. Um, just an update of what I've been up to lately. Uh, these cabinets here have been becoming a lot more popular over here for conversions. Um, people buying kits to convert these and also just doing their own conversions. Um, but I've been getting a few questions on a couple of things. Um, one of them has been keeping the screen clear and fitting of wipers. Uh, and the other thing has been lighting. So what I wanted to do was put together a couple of products on it. Um, I've already got the conversion kits for these, um, but the latest thing has been lighting and also keeping the screen clear. So um, just a couple of the little projects that I've done. One of them is this lighting bar. We'll go over that in, in a minute. Um, but the idea behind these next two uh, products have been to make them really simple and, and quick to install, um, preferably without modifying the cabinets at all. So they just completely drop in. Um, so, like I say, the first one's this um, this lighting rig. So effectively, that'll just slot directly in a place like that. It can be screwed down if need be, but it doesn't have to. Um, and that's effectively it. it's installed. So I'll go over that in a, in a minute. Um, and the other thing um, is just a some kind of closed loop system. Um, <clears throat> I'll go into this in a little more detail. Uh, probably when I'm doing the next round of stainless cabinets so I can use some of the stainless cabinets there um, just to show how I've been doing those um, explain a couple of the simple things but this video here is more based around uh, these cabinets here um, a lot of time if people are doing these cabinets it's because it's, it's a lot more affordable uh, they may already have the cabinet um, any number of reasons but because that's kind of the ideology behind them, making them accessible, making them cheap. Um, I've tried to set this up in, in, a, in a really cheap way. Um, so this system here that I put together involves a bit of 3D printing, um, but if there's a demand for them, then I'll look into making those available either as files or potentially as products. Um, but this is just around a really simple way of one, keeping the screen clear, and for two, making it nice and easy to, to light everything up. So um, first of all, I think we'll go over the closed loop setup that I'm gonna do. And then secondly, um, we'll just quickly touch on this light system. Um, I won't go in too much into building it, but just the, the idea behind it and how quick and easy it is to install. So um, let's get into it. So this is all I've got in mind for the uh, window rinse system, um, closed loop window rinse system. My larger cabinets, the closed loop system is a little bit more complex um, and it deals with a wiper with a window rinse nozzle. So there's some fresh water hitting the screen before the wiper runs. Whereas this one here would just be um, a spray bar. Um, with these cabinets, you can fit a wiper in them put a wiper up there but the window is very narrow anyway um, and if you can get by just with a rinse um, which I've done in the past um, it's a lot more simple um, and it's one less thing to to have wired and, and sit in your cabinet you're, you're drilling things you um, usually got to mess around with your wiper arm lengths to make it work properly um, so this system that I'm putting together um, is to be as simple as possible and if we just quickly look in there, that's it there. And effectively it's uh, two end caps, 3D printed end caps, and then just an aluminium tube with some holes drilled in it. Uh, and if you look up there, the mounting points are just the mounting points that come through from the window bezel. Um, so effectively you just put a couple of longer screws on the two ends, um, and then the whole thing bolts together. So that side of things, super simple, bolted in, no modifications to the cabinet, just swapping out these two. As you can see there, there's the old, the old screw type, and that's just got a longer M4 cap screw in it. Um, on this side of things, to feed it, um, I've just gone on, these are like 10 bucks or $14 or something, these ones are about $7. Um, for this particular cabinet, I'm pretty much just going to run the lower box, just so there's some... Um, some fluid that um, and a reservoir for the fluid to go into it'll drain out of the reservoir bucket in the bottom um, and then it'll drain into this um, the idea behind this setup here is i wanted something cheap to put with either 
the old dishwasher cabinet that's going to get a birthday soon or this one here that I built for the wife to frost some glass with um, these screens here you can see it's still covered and all my stuff all working around it these screens here get dirty as well um, and if I can put something simple on there just to keep it clean make it a little bit easier to see um, while you're working with it so that's one idea the other one's for this one and then eventually I'll just transfer this system over onto either that cabinet or that one and in which case I'm going to put a second stage of separation on it which will effectively just be that box like that and the pump will sit up here in some orientation or other um, just to make it simple so I'm going to go ahead and start putting that together and then once it's all uh, it's all strapped together, filled, wired up. Um, we'll we'll chuck it in down here, and we'll see how that light bar uh, works and how the rinse bar works. So uh, that's where I'm at. Um, <clears throat> just screwed that on, making sure that I'm able to still open the clips. It's got this little um, tank outlet there, which just kind of guides. That vinyl tube down and I can actually set the height there um, if I want to pull it up a little bit if there's sediment on the bottom there I can pull it up a little bit so it's not gonna um, suck up all that sediment off the bottom um, <clears throat> these diaphragm pumps are pretty good at, um, at drawing water up um, so there's no issue with them being um, quite a way above the water level the top side just has another one of these tank fittings in it um, this one's larger so the inlet um, that will come in will come out of the um, the reservoirs will be half inch and this is three quarter the reason I've done it that way is because when it's uh, being used the light and this box is filling up um, if it's half inch and half inch and it's not flowing very well for whatever reason um, I didn't want this box overflowing so um, being half inch and half inch it shouldn't have been a problem um, it shouldn't have been able to flow in anything faster than would flow out but by going to the three quarter inch um, it just eliminates that as uh, any any concern at all this here is a, just an organizer tray that goes in the top so for now I'm just going to leave it out but I think later um, I'll probably cut parts out of the top and then underneath and then maybe out of the top again um, and by doing it that way um, <clears throat> it'll just have like a, an extra level of separation so any sediment and any media that comes out will stay on the top and then you can pretty much just pluck the whole lot out and then go um, go and tip it out so um, I don't know yet whether I'll just drill a hole in the bottom of it or whether I'll put another riser in it by using um, another one of those three quarter inch fittings um, but at this stage I don't really need that so that'll get eliminated and I'm just going to end up um, putting that top lid back on um, for the purposes of this though because it's got the bucket sitting quite low um, I'll probably just drill a hole in the side of the bucket and that'll fill straight over the side and and straight into the bottom box um, and it's just a matter of keeping that bottom box cleaned out a little better um, I'll effectively separate them see at this at this stage this is held down uh, being clamped together um, by that tank outlet so it stays together quite nicely um, but that will go together completely probably with that separator when it goes into either that or that cabinet um, but for now I'll just wire this in um, and get it all plumbed up obviously inlet outlet and that outlet for this stage is going to come up and go straight through here um, whether or not I 3d print up something that goes in here um, maybe with like a cable gland fitting in it and then that'll just if you have a look up through there oh, where are we you can just see that bar there it's not focusing very well but you can see it there'll be a fitting going straight in there so that'll just come straight out here um, and then down to um, the uh, the wash box underneath so the closed loop box underneath so at this stage it's only going to be um, a real basic setup um, but I'll come back and I'll do another video when I fit it to one of the other cabinets um, this one here I haven't actually designed up how the um, the 
the rinse bar is going to work in it just yet so once that's done um, I'll probably readdress this video um, but for now I'll finish plumbing it up fill it with some water and we can give it a test right we've got uh, some water in here pumps all plumbed up you see the hose goes up I'll just jam that rag in there for now it comes up through into let me see it there let's try there see it just comes up into that rinse bar there um, I haven't actually checked, you can kind of see the holes through there, I haven't actually checked um, whether or not they're going to flow enough to stop the pump cycling on and off. The pump has a pressure switch on the front there, um, so I may need to either adjust those holes or mess around with a switch so that it just runs whenever you're stepping on it. Um, but I can deal with that a little later. You can see the tubes down there in the water, I'll just pull it up off the bottom a little bit. Um, and then just some temporary wiring. I will eventually um, mount a block in there um, so that the pedal will just plug into it and the power will plug into it. Um, before we get into that, um, I've just because I've used my power supply that I have, the only spare one I've got for running the pump, um, I've actually teed it into this other cabinet here just with an extension lead. That'll go through, you can see here. Um, let's toggle that on, you can barely see, there's a light, barely does anything, but I just wanted to show, um, see that's it as standard, no modifications being made or anything, um, I can do this all with one hand while I'm filming, just drop this into place, just like that, drops in nicely, you can put screws in the corners if wanted, but um, it'll just sit there, and then all you do is you unplug from here, Plug it straight into here, one-handed, there we go, and then turn it on with the button that's uh, built into the frame there, much brighter. Um, so this doesn't have the pump in it, I was using it to test, um, test some conversion kit dimensions and hose lengths. Um, so this is just a basic test, um, I can make any adjustments that I need to um, and then next time that I've got it set up to run um, with a conversion kit for testing or whatever I'll be able to check again so I haven't actually tested this this could be a giant fail that I have to come back to um, but I'm just about to jump on the pedal and we'll see uh, what sort of spray pattern we get there we go So I wonder if I, it should do fairly well. Um, and it seems to be right through the middle of the screen. So I will check again next time it's running, but the other thing I could do is adjust whereabouts in the screen it's hitting because it's hitting really high it hits right up here somewhere if I move it down here a little bit it may be better but for all intents and purposes seems to work all right the other thing I could do is also drill into a couple of extra holes in it uh, which I may pull out and try that now um, but really it's doing everything I need it to um, and I think um, by the time I get the next kit in there to try um, I think it'll do everything I need it to so there's that there's the light switch like I showed uh, the light frame and as you can see you can still just lift it right out nothing holding in place with gravity but that's all it needs um, if you want to you can screw it in uh, being aluminium it, the LEDs don't transfer that much heat through um, but the aluminium will take heat away um, from the LEDs um, when I first started and I just had them taped up they were getting quite hot you can feel the tape getting quite hot and I had a few of the LEDs go out um, so just being in an aluminium frame helps these um, quite a bit um, so at this stage it's just kind of um, what I filled in the bottom there, it doesn't overflow. Um, I will put an overflow on the reservoir when I get the next pump in there. 
and that'll just drain directly into into the bottom box and then when I get it set up for this other cabinet here um, I'll put this top box back on um, but for now that seems to be doing everything that I need it to do um, nice and simple the pumps may be $30 um, and then like I said I think 10 and like seven dollars or something I can't remember um, for these boxes they're pretty cheap um, and then you're probably looking four or five dollars for the, each one of those fittings plus some hose so you can make them really really cheap um, if you're using a more industrial setup you probably want something a little bit a um, little bit heavier duty especially pump wise um, but for just the system in your corner of your garage that you've built on the cheap one of these converted cabinets that's all you need once again thanks for watching